This is V from a Canadian RV, right? In this video, what I'll be doing is replacing my lead acid batteries with my brand new Battleborn batteries, lithium ion. So they finally arrived and uh, you can see there's uh, four boxes. So we're going to be changing uh, all four batteries and uh, we'll do a quick unboxing here. The way they come is in a pretty well uh, plain shipping container and um, I'll just open up the case here. They come nicely packaged with uh, foam all the way around them. And uh, there they are. Now, I'm not going to lift that out. It's, it's a little bit heavy. I should use two hands. But um, Battleborn batteries, I've done a lot of research on lithium ion batteries. And uh, I, I feel, I, I believe that uh, Battleborn is the best in the lithium ion world especially with their uh, battery management controller. They give you all the different uh, screws for the connections on the lugs. And uh, I'm gonna start uh, pulling out the old batteries and uh, we'll walk you through that. We'll uh, take out one of these batteries, have a closer look at it in a minute. But right now, this is um, how they come and uh, we've ordered four of them in four boxes. So they're here today. We're quite excited to start the uh, changeover from lead acid to lithium ion battleborne batteries. So where I'm starting right now is in the main bay area of the battery area and it's uh, underneath the, the step. So um, what I'll be doing first of all is uh, taking off the grounds that supply the ground wire to these two batteries in here. So uh, we'll, we'll do that first so that, that there's no connectivity to anything on the batteries and uh, we'll carry on. So what I'm going to do is uh, take off the grounds and it's uh, starting right here. And the first thing that we do is we tape everything so that there's no connectivity to anything that it touches. That's the one wire done. The next one, we're gonna go in and take off the positive wire on the other two batteries that feed the other two. And we're going to tape this one up also. So what I've done now is isolated the two far batteries in the other bay. And I can leave that down like that. For what it's worth right now, I'll just leave those off. And well, I'll just put them back on just to, to make sure that they're on right at the right terminal. All right, so that's it for now on this one. Let's go out and uh, we will go to the outside batteries. Here we are in the outside bay or the uh, two auxiliary batteries. And uh, we're gonna start removing the cables on these.
So if I take this one off right now, that should clear the neutral one. Yeah, there it is. I can take that one right out. I'm going to, this is the other negative one that comes from the other battery that's farther in. Just for safety, I'm going to uh, tape this one up. Now I'm going to take the positive off uh, the, the back terminal here. That one should clear the other positive battery cable. Oh, it's tie wrapped there, so we'll just leave that one there. Now I'm just going to take the red one from here, it's a little hard to see, and I'm just going to tape this one too. <laughs> So now what we can do with this one, this battery is free to come out. There, that's one battery out. We're going to have to release the uh, two clim uh, clamps on the inside and uh, that battery will be ready to come out too. This is the other battery tray in which we have our other two batteries. And what I'll be doing very shortly, it's now been painted and ready to go. So I'm going to put in um, my first battery, but I'm going to put the terminals on it because it's easier to reach the terminals out on uh, the outside battery here. So that's what we're going to do. We've got uh, our brand new terminals. And uh, there we go. We've actually upgraded to uh, 2 watt, a little bigger and uh, heftier little cable, a lot uh, flexible. And uh, looking forward to uh, putting those on right now. So I've installed uh, the new uh, lithium ion batteries and you can see all the new cables. Um, they're strapped down and they're now in the uh, outside uh, compartment. And again, the nice thing about lithium ion, they don't have to vent and there's no fumes, but uh, they're in there nice and tight and uh, looking good. So that's the two done on the outside tray, uh, which is behind the, uh, the step where the two batteries are. So now I'm gonna start working on the other two batteries and hope that uh, we can power things up in the next uh, little while. So I've got uh, two of the batteries in right now. You can see them sitting right there. There's a bit of a challenge. I've got some wiring in the back there that I've got to move away so that the battery will slide in. So that shouldn't be a problem. I'm just gonna now make my new battery cables. Um, the old ones seem to be okay, but they're they're very corroded and uh, with all the, the goop on it from the lead acid batteries. So um, I'm thinking of putting on some new cables. So that's the two batteries here. I'll do a little mod in the back to make this one uh, fit a little nicer. Where I am is in my power bay where all the uh, electrics come in and uh, the uh, various uh, control systems we have here. Now, part of going to lithium-ion batteries is um, you've got to check your, um, your charger regulator, I guess. And um, what I have right here is a Progressive Dynamics um, Inner Power 9200 series. And this kicks out 70 amps for uh, charging the batteries. 
But the other uh, challenge is that you have to be able to put out 14.4 to 14.6 volts to charge lithium ion 100%. Now, what uh, Progressive Dynamics does, and this, I guess, charger, when the manufacturer put it in, is more or less designed to work on lead-acid batteries. Because it goes into a trickle mode, it goes into a storage mode, uh, then it goes into a boost mode, which I need for my lithium-ion batteries. Now, what they also make is this uh, little pendant and what this does is a switch on the bottom here, and you're able to cycle the different systems. So what I can do is I can put it into boost mode by pressing this button there, and um, it'll take it into boost mode for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll kick down to uh, a stable 13.1, 13.5 volts just to, to keep the batteries uh, topped up. Now, of course, for lithium ion, they like around 14 plus volts, but uh, I'm thinking that with lithium ion, um, we'll work just fine with this uh, char uh, 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 converter right now. So I did check that with uh, um, Battleborn batteries, and they said, yes, it'll work fine. Uh, for now, but I'll have to keep triggering um, the batteries if I, uh, you know, are, are not running for off the, uh, the the vehicle for long periods of time because the vehicle, of course, puts out 14.5, 14.6 volts, and it does a good job that way. But the way we RV, we're always driving uh, and then using the batteries all night. So uh, for right now, we'll leave this charger in place. And um, but what I want to do is the the um, the pendant here more or less plugs in to the bottom with this little jack here at the bottom. So what I've started to do is I want to put uh, this pendant up in my control system. So what I've done is I've started to run this wire all the way to the back here underneath the coach and it goes right to the front uh, where I've got the wiring up into the bay. So what I'll be able to do is I'm going to plug this wire in where this jack goes underneath the, the unit here and then this pendant I'll be able to keep up in my control console up in the RV so I don't have to come back here and uh, trigger the battery. So that's my project right now that I'm doing and uh, I'll take you underneath and show you how I've wired the whole bottom of the Here we are underneath the coach and what I've been doing is uh, running the um, the cable that I needed down in, I put this uh, plastic, uh, plastic flex core, uh, it's in there, and I'm running it right down the main channel, right from the back of the coach, uh, all the way. Um, the only thing I gotta be careful from um, is there's the mufflers right here, the uh, uh, one of the catalytic converters, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can put it out to the outside and uh, see if I can get it away from uh, the muffler here and it'll be a little better. So we're just gonna go right down here all the way with the Coraflex and um, then take it up into the compartment where I want to feed my uh, pendant. So there's where it is underneath and uh, we'll carry on and uh, keep moving along with it. So what my goal right now is to mount the pendant um, right about here. So now I'll be able to trigger the batteries into 14.6 volts. And you can see where I've actually ran another wire up here, this part here, which already goes down into the, 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 the channel right there. So what I'll be doing is uh, plugging the pendant and controlling it from right there. And I'll plug in the other unit where in the power bay that uh, you'll be able to control the uh, progressive uh, dynamics uh, charger. So now one more look at the uh, main bay. And what I've done is I've got uh, all the batteries sitting really nice in the tray. I painted the tray before. The challenge was to move all this wiring uh, on the back side. I had to pull it out and forward, as you can see in front of the batteries, and then uh, this battery slipped in uh, really nice. So there's all my two watt cables. Everything is hooked up. I put also another, um, there was a bunch of fuses there that went to the battery. I took them off and, and put them on uh, this cable right there. So it's a very nice, neat job. I'm just gonna finish tie wrapping a few more things and uh, we're done. This is the uh, Battleborn Lithium Ion install on a Class A Georgetown Forest River. 
This is V from a Canadian RVer. We hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe as we'll be doing more videos and hit the bell to be notified that uh, new videos are coming online. Thanks so much for watching.